Greetings, my name is Mary Glenn. I am the Acting Director of the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs Education Service. I want to welcome all who are watching today. I am honored to be a part of such a great mission to serve our veterans, service members, and your families, and to be able to continue our interactions through virtual forums like this. At Education Service, we are focused on two principles, access and outcomes. That means that we are continuing our promise to provide timely access to education benefits and resources for GI Bill students. Our current digital GI Bill modernization effort is exciting because it incorporates both principles. It focuses on producing the best outcomes for veterans by removing barriers to accessing the GI Bill so that education support from VA is delivered in a world-class fashion. Supporting GI Bill students is a top priority for VA. You are the bedrock of this nation and we need you to lead us into the future. Your impact on the country is undeniable. In fact, your pursuit of higher education or vocational training not only positively impacts your future, but the future of the entire U.S. economy. Each year, thousands of GI Bill students complete their training and go on to start careers in high demand industries, build small businesses, and contribute directly to their community through their continued service. That's why we are focused on improving the GI Bill experience so that you can be confident in your future and have the opportunity to not only choose, but more readily access the educational path that's best for you, your family, and your future. Today, we have our Program Integration Officer, Ricardo De Silva, joining us to answer questions we've received from you. You will come away with a better understanding of your GI Bill benefits and VA's continued efforts to modernize and improve your GI Bill experience. At Education Service, we will continue to work closely with our valued GI Bill education partners to set GI Bill students up for success and give back to you, the veterans and service members who have given so much to us. Thank you again for joining us today. My team and I look forward to continuing to support you through your GI Bill education journey. Without further ado, I will pass it over to our Chief of Digital Engagement, Jared Anderson, to kick off the 2022 GI Bill Summit. Thank you, Ms. Glenn, for the incredible words and your leadership in this journey to improve the GI Bill student experience. As we get into the question and answer portion of the GI Bill Summit, I want to take a moment to say thank you to those who have submitted their questions to the VA. You've asked, and we are here to answer those questions that you've provided. As Ms. Glenn mentioned, I'm here with Mr. Ricardo De Silva. He's the Program Integration Officer for Education Service. And today we'll be answering those questions and cover a range of topics, including accessing your benefits, the monthly enrollment verification requirement, COVID-19 protections of monthly housing allowance, GI Bill modernization efforts, and even more. All right, thank you so much, Ricardo. Let's just jump right in. The first question is from Jack. He asked, I've heard the VA launched an effort to modernize the GI Bill with a digital GI Bill. What does this mean and how will it impact my access to benefits? It's a great question and a terrific way for us to kick off here today. Uh, I'll say that the digital GI Bill is our modernization effort and it's really an opportunity for us to help veterans access, manage, and use their GI Bill benefits. And so as we get going as in this initiative, it's really putting the user, again, whether it's a veteran or a school certifying official, at the center of our transformation here. And so we're doing that through a number of ways, but in particular, we're asking for your feedback, trying to understand what do you all want in a system and apply that to our designs and to that experience. And in particular, what we've done with the GI Bill comparison tool recently is we've added two features that really make it easier for veterans and others to see where they can use their benefits. In particular, we have a new maps feature so you can search by zip code now to see the schools in, in, in an area that you're in. And then you can also look at schools side by side to make a comparison of what they offer. Uh, and so there's more coming. I encourage everyone to visit our website and to also stay uh, updated through our Facebook page. Thank you, Ricardo, that was a great answer. The next question we have is from Jackson who wrote, uh, I'm happy with the GI Bill systems and that they're being modernized. Can you tell me a little bit more about the monthly enrollment verification process? 
It's a great question. Monthly enrollment verification is a new process for post 9-11 GI Bill students. And so when we were implementing this, we really wanted to think about what do students want? And they wanted a simple and convenient way to be able to verify monthly. And so we've introduced a text messaging feature, which is really our simplest way, or their simplest way to be able to verify monthly. But also we understand that text is not for everybody. So we've got an email option as well. And so doing either ensures that your monthly housing allowance payments continue uninterrupted. Thanks again, Ricardo. Those are some really great answers. Now we're gonna switch gears for a moment. School certifying officials are doing an amazing job adapting to changes with new legislating and supporting students' access to their benefits. Let's take a moment to highlight one of them now. My name is Susan Stakes, and I'm the school certifying official at Bossier Parish Community College. I've been employed here for 12 years, and I'm also the program manager of the Veterans Resource Center on the campus. I personally love doing what I do um, to give back to the military community. We have an opportunity to invite them to campus, let them come in and see the Vet Center, and show them how to apply for their benefits. Sometimes they are eligible for more than one benefit, so which benefit would best suit them at that given time? It's very rewarding to see them uh, get so excited when they realize that we have a program that fits their needs, and it kind of takes the edge off of the uh, anticipation of going to school. Becoming a school certifying official was actually something I was asked to do, um, knowing my relationship in the military, um, having been a spouse and understanding the, the language, understanding the transition and the lifestyle. It was a perfect fit for me. There's always new things, and, and I think that's an important part of being a SCO, is you're not just doing a job. You have to be able to be up to date on all the changes, all the regulations, but you also have to be compassionate and have empathy and understanding. It is an underserved community and I just want to make sure that the veterans get everything they deserve. They gave so much for all of us. Thank you to all the SEOs on the line today for all your hard work. We really appreciate your support of the GI Bill students along their educational journey. So Ms. Monique Rogers, thanks so much for joining us. I gotta tell you, I'm super excited to have you answering questions with us today because as the executive business partner for the PIO, your insights could be extremely valuable. Do you mind answering a couple of questions with us today? Of course. We received a few questions regarding what happens when a student fails to or forgets to verify their enrollment. Can you explain that a little bit for us? So payments are distributed on the first of the month. And it takes about five days for payments to go through the electronic system. However, if individuals fail to uh, certify via text, which we've now provided to them lately, um, then we will not be able to pay benefits. Let me explain. So let's say an individual actually has um, started school in February and they haven't verified for February and then they don't verify for March. Well, they will receive their payments for February and March. However, April payment will be delayed. And until they verify with the call center at that point, because now they have not verified through text. So now they have to call our call center in order to get their payment for April. I hope that answers the question. Absolutely. That was a great answer. Thank you. Let's discuss accessing your benefits, right? Uh, the next question comes from Paul. And he asked, why can't veterans who earn their post 9-11 GI benefits transfer it to dependents after separating or retiring? It's, it's a great question. It's one we get frequently. Uh, just for some background, the post 9-11 GI Bill is intended in part to be a recruitment or retention tool for our military. And so in 2009, uh, the law was updated to allow service members to transfer uh, their post 9-11 GI Bill benefits to eligible dependents. That said, um, they do have to do six years of service and then commit to another four years to be able to transfer their benefits. I encourage everyone who's interested in doing this or to learn more about it to visit our website to see how this works uh, for themselves and their family. So Ricardo, that was another great answer. Thank you so much for that. April asked about the policy regarding what happens when your school closes or a program is suspended from GI Bill benefits. Can you tell us a little bit more about what happens in that case? April, it's a great question. 
Uh, if your school closes or your program is disapproved because of a change in VA regulations or law, there is the potential that you may be eligible to receive restoration of your entitlement. I encourage uh, folks who think that they're in this situation or have experienced a school closure or program disapproval uh, to visit our website to see how they can apply to VA to have their benefits restored. Wow, that's another great answer. Thanks again, Ricardo. I received a question from Teresa, who is wondering if she can access her Montgomery GI Bill benefits, even though it's been longer than 10 years since she's separated. Uh, thanks for the question. By law, Montgomery GI Bill benefits expire after 10 years, but there are certain exceptions. So I encourage you, Teresa, to visit the website you see on the screen uh, to see if you are eligible to receive an extension on that expiration date. Fantastic. Stacy asked if VA is planning to remove the 15-year time limit so retirees like herself can use their remaining post-9-11 GI Bill education benefits. Stacy, it's a great question and one we get a lot from veterans. Uh, the introduction of the Colmary Act in 2017 removed the 15-year delimiting date for post-9-11 GI Bill benefits for veterans uh, and service members who left service after January 1st, 2013. Uh, if that's not you, there's still options available to you from the GI Bill, including Vet Tech and VRAP. So I encourage you and, and your colleagues to take a look at our website to get more information on those programs. The Veteran Rapid Retraining Assistance Program, or VRAP, offers veterans who lost their job due to the COVID-19 pandemic and who don't have VA education benefits an opportunity to train for high demand jobs. Don't miss out. What kind of training is available? VRAP provides training toward an associate's degree, non-college degree, or certificate in hundreds of high demand occupations, meaning there's a need for those skills in today's job market. Occupations include technology, education, healthcare support, construction, transportation, and more. There are thousands of training programs at hundreds of approved institutions across the United States, including Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico. VRAP participants receive up to 12 months of tuition and fees and a monthly housing allowance. VRAP will only be available through December 11, 2022, or until its $386 million in funding runs out. The sooner you apply, the sooner you can begin your journey towards a more secure future. Apply for VRAP today. For more information, visit va.gov slash VRAP. So Raylene asked, for education benefits, I know there is more than just one scholarship available to use. I'm already using the Fry Scholarship. Am I able to use the other educational scholarships as well? Uh, it's a great question, Raylene, and it's, it gives me the opportunity to say, the GI Bill not only provides benefits to veterans and service members, but there is also programs available to their family. In your particular, particular scenario, you're using the Fry Scholarship, which provides 100% post-9-11 GI Bill benefits to certain family members. I also want to note that we have the Survivors and Dependents Educational Assistance Program, and that's available, again, to certain eligible dependents, think children and spouses. And for more information on that and how to apply, please visit our website. Louisa, thanks so much for joining us today. Sure, Jared, and I have to say I'm just glad to be here today and hope that we can answer some questions for our veteran service members and the rest of our community who have, who have questions about their GI Bill benefits. Well, fantastic, let's jump right in. Roddy asked, he said he used his GI Bill to get his first degree, and he's wondering how he can get an IT certification to help further his education. Oh man, Rodney, that is a good question. And I will say this, with the GI Bill, you can do more than just get your degree. Did you know that the GI Bill will actually help you to pay for certification courses that you might need to maybe get a promotion to work for work or if you're just looking to break into a career field? With the GI Bill, you can take those, those various certification courses and tests. However, I wanna stress, you must have, make sure that those programs are um, approved by the GI Bill. We don't want anyone going out and then taking something that isn't approved. We wanna make sure that you, you, your benefits are what, you, what you're approved for. Um, also, we have the Veteran Employment Through Technology Education Courses uh, Program. This is a pilot program that allows veterans and service members who are with 180 days of transitioning from service to train in the high technology career field. They can gain uh, skills in high tech and prepare themselves for their next career. One thing to keep in mind here is those who are applying must have at least one day of benefits to be eligible.
The Vet Tech program is a five-year pilot program that brings in training providers to train our veterans and our service members that are within 180 days of exiting the force and teach them high technology. We're helping them get into a great program, complete that program, and then go work for a Fortune 500 company in IT. It gave me the opportunity to push myself to do better, to learn a new trade, learn a new skill. We talked to some students that before going to the vet tech program, maybe they're making you know just above minimum wage, but now you're talking about actually going and making a living wage, being able to support a family. That's what I love about the vet tech program. So shifting back to our question and answers, I'm 100% disabled used up my GI Bill on a bachelor's degree, and I want to stay in school for a master's. How is that actually possible? If you are disabled and prohibited from working, uh, we actually have the Veteran Readiness um, Employment Program, which is VRNE, also known as Chapter 31. An individual can actually get support through them and be able to get uh, education, job training, and the ability to help them keep their jobs. So if they have any further questions, that's not our education department. However, if they have additional questions regarding VRNE, they can visit our website and can get further information. Now we're gonna take a moment to go behind the scenes to talk to a couple of veteran claim examiners and to hear about how they support veterans and beneficiaries to reach their education goals. Let's take a look. My name is Matt Murphy. I am a Veterans Claims Examiner at the Buffalo Regional Processing Office, and I've been a VCE for about two and a half years. First learning about the role of a Veterans Claims Examiner, I thought my father, who was a Vietnam veteran, came home and utilized his education benefits. If I would be able to help somebody such as my father to be able to utilize their education benefits, I feel like it would be just something that's uh, such a wonderful experience and to be able to help them and their families to utilize the benefits would just be such an honor. My role's impact is uh, quite large regarding uh, getting back to the veterans and their families, um, being able to provide tuition assistance along with books and supplies, as well as housing payments to those veterans and their dependents who are utilizing the education benefits to help them try and grow and learn more uh, is just really beneficial for everyone involved. My name is Crystal Cheater. I have been at the Muskogee VA Regional Office for 15 years, and I have been in education processing since 2012, so 10 years. I chose to become a VCE because I wanted to do a job where I knew I was uh, impacting other people's lives and it didn't really feel like a job. It's something I truly enjoy doing by serving others. By working for VA and paying VA education benefits, I feel like I'm fulfilling the VA mission. I'm most excited about the GI Bill modernization efforts in the aspect of being able to provide a faster, more streamlined benefit and enable the claimants to be able to certify their attendance via a text message or an email or through a computerized system to be able to log in and get a copy of their eligibility information instead of waiting for it to come in the mail or emailing us and asking for a copy. In this way, they can stay out of a hardship situation and be able to stay on top of their financial obligations and have a better benefit overall. That was great. I want to take a moment to thank all of our VCEs for everything that you do to contribute to improving the GI Bill student experience. Your work is greatly appreciated. So we received several questions asking if we we're looking to increase monthly housing allowance rates to accommodate for inflation, as well as rising cost of living. You know, the gas prices right now just alone. Can you expand on this for uh, our viewers a little bit more? Monthly housing allowance rates are generally equivalent to an E5 with dependence rate. So what's that mean? It means actually that the Department of Defense sets that rate annually, and we here at VA follow it. Now, everyone's circumstances are going to be different, including where they might go to school and how they might go to school. So I encourage everyone to get an estimate of their benefits by using our GI Bill comparison tool. So Keith is asking, why do online students only get 50% MHA? 
Keith, thanks so much for the feedback. I, I want to make sure I say that to them. By law, monthly housing allowance is uh, rated at 50% of the national average for those who are attending either remote or virtually. So we've received quite a few questions asking if the COVID-19 protections will be extended. Freddie asked, is there anything being pushed through to extend the COVID-19 housing benefits? Freddie, since 2020, we've been working with our congressional and VSO partners on making sure that GI Bill benefits were protected during the COVID-19 pandemic. In particular, we saw lots of folks go from in-person training to online. And in those circumstances, generally, the monthly housing allowance is lower. And so we've worked with Congress to make sure that that wouldn't impact our students. Uh, those authorities expire here in June, and if anything changes with that, uh, if there is an extension, we'll make sure to let folks know. And, and I encourage, again, everyone to visit our website, but also stay plugged into our Facebook page for the most recent updates. Thank you, Ricardo, Luisa, and Monique for helping to answer some of our GI Bill student questions. It was a pleasure spending this time with you today. Our goal at VA is to help you get access to benefits that you've earned. And I hope some of our answers today do just that. Moving forward, we will continue to engage with you through social media focus groups and events like this to gather feedback, hear your questions, and improve your GI Bill experience. We understand we weren't able to get to everyone's questions here today, but please be on the lookout as we will be providing answers on RallyPoint in the next coming weeks. If you have any further questions, please connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. There, you'll be able to not only engage with us and receive GI Bill updates, but you'll also be able to find ways to access a recording of today's events once it's made available. GI Bill students, we encourage you to also subscribe to the GI Bill student newsletter to stay in the loop on the latest GI Bill updates. Thank you all for attending today's GI Bill Summit. We look forward to engaging with you as we work to deliver on our nation's promise to provide you, our veteran service members and families, with the resources you need to succeed in your educational journey. Thank you and have a great day.